What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane. Today I'm joined with Bill. We're gonna be checking out a pair of amplifiers, monoblock amplifiers. They're the JC1 Plus from Parasound. So for equipment, this is what we're gonna be pairing them up with. Speaker wise, we've got the Focal Canta number twos. If you missed the review for the number threes, I'll link that video down below in the video's description. And for speaker cable, we're using some Kimber Cable 8TCs. As a control piece to the monoblocks, we're using Cambridge Audio Edges monoblocks. And for preamp, uh, what was the preamp again that we're using? The NADC 658. What are your first thoughts, impressions on these monoblocks? Well, I mean, going from the Cambridge to the, to the Parasounds, you know, you're talking, to, there's a huge power disparity. Immediately you noticed, you know, at the same, same volume level, um, an immediate, like, much more bass. In terms of the overall performance, I found the Parasounds to be, like, really, really neutral from um, high end to low end. They had, they, you know, I know it's the, your processor's doing all, you know, most of the imaging, but the, the power coming from these things was, was super clean, super stable, and, uh, you know, it did, a, it did a nice job of powering the signal all the way through the range. Now let's go over specs really quick. These, uh, the power output on the JC1 Pluses are what? They are? It's a 450 at eight ohms, uh, four to 450 at eight ohms, um, eight to 850 at four ohms, and 1200 to 1300 at two ohms. And they are also one ohm stable, so if you've got some speakers that dip down into one ohm, they'll definitely drive those with no problem. So anyways, my first thoughts on, on these amplifiers were like, wow, these were more robust sounding than the, uh, than the Cambridge. And when I mean robust, I mean, uh, as far as like, for like bass and control, the mid range, the low end, they seem to drive these Canton number twos just like, just harder, not, not drastically harder, but I could feel it vibrating through the floor, up through the chair. Every time we were listening to some pop music or was the, uh, was the song that we listened to, the uh, Rolling Stones song? Sympathy for the Devil. Sympathy for the Devil. We also listened to like Ryan Adams. Every time a bass note would hit, I could feel it definitely travel up through the chair more and also through my body more. Yeah, that whereas, Wonderwall's got a great bass section. Mm -hmm. whereas, um, whereas the Cambridge, definitely lighter. I, I didn't feel a tactile response with those amps. And also, the Parasound is a warmer sounding amp, I feel. Like I felt with, with the Edge amps, Slightly brighter, for sure, definitely uh, a bit more brighter. Whereas the um, with the Parasound, it kind of rolled off the high end a bit, and it definitely brought out the mid range and vocals a lot more. They're definitely more prominent. Uh, I would say a little bit more rounded on the top end compared to the edges. Edges were a little bit more edgier sounding, which for these particular speakers I thought worked very well. So I think as like a synergy the Parasound with the brighter Beryllium Dome tweets on the Focals, definitely a nice pairing, especially coming from the Kenta number threes. Yeah, I found that, I found that as well. I thought that these, um, uh, the Parasound is a really, really nice pairing with these Kenta speakers because it does tend to take a little bit off the top of that, you know, they can be a little, a little overly bright. The Kenta threes were a much brighter speaker. The Kenta II sounded better. And then when you pair them with these particular, those, these monoblocks, it, it really makes it a, a nice, um, like I said, the, the top end's a little more rounded. And I found it to be um, a much more neutral response from high end to low end. As far as like sound stage, I would say with the Parasound amps, I don't, I feel like it wasn't the deepest sound stage, but, but then again, it could be the speakers that we're pairing them with, but I felt that the sound stage definitely nice wide horizontal stage. I felt that it, it didn't bring maybe the performers or the instruments forward that much, where I know the speakers I felt maybe a little bit more shallow, a little bit more intimate sounding than the, than the edges did. I felt the edges, since it was a little bit more less in the mid range and a little bit more less in the bass region on the bottom end, that it seemed a little bit more open to me. Okay. But, but, but for me, the Parasound just had more presence, a bit more weight for sure, and a bit more like in your room, like maybe the performers were more in the space rather than being out right. outside. When we listened to the uh, Cow the Cowboy Junkies live at the Trinity Sessions, mm -hmm. that same thing. I had that same experience with the Parasounds because it's a live venue and it's mm -hmm. it's basically you know all the musicians are arrayed around an area mic when this is the way this is recorded, and you really hear hear the venue. And I know I've said this a bunch of times before, but I think that the the Cambridge does a nice job. 
but I think the Parasound really did a, did a, a superior job of, of reproducing the room and the sound of the environment as well. Yeah, so definitely more kind of a intimate sound with the, with the Parasound. I don't know if that sounds more accurate to what the recording is supposed to sound like or what the venue sounds like, but that's the sense that I got from it. But I did like the way that it handled the mid-range, especially vocals. It was definitely warmer sounding overall. Um, the edge was, man, listen, I like the edge, but it has a slight brighter tone to it, maybe slightly more emptier feel. I mean, I can go either way, really, depending on what I'm listening to, which one I like better. But, but for me, I, I did feel like the vocals, it's just a warmer overall tone with the Parasound, and just everything was smoother sounding. Although, for certain things with like microdynamics, when we're listening to that Dominique song, there's this uh, this little twang sound towards towards the end of the. Yeah, it's almost like I don't know if you've ever heard the uh, the the sound that the guys would make when they play like a saw. That that yeah, that yeah. weird vibrato kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's that there's that in that song, the Dominique Holmes song, which I feel I can hear it a little bit better. It, it seems like it's coming from the between the center, I would say center speaker, there's no center speaker, but between the center, between both speakers, and then, and then the, uh, the right speaker. I can hear it a little bit more easier on the edge speakers where I feel like it vanishes a bit on the power sound. So I feel like maybe, maybe a little bit more detail on the edge. So I feel like there's a little trade-off here, a little bit more warmth, a little bit more weightiness with the power sound where you give up a little bit more of that detail and openness coming from the edge. I didn't notice a, a lack of detail one for the other, but they're gonna, you know, my ears are my ears and Shane hears how Shane hears. So I, I noticed, the biggest thing for me was, I noticed right away the, the bass response and then also that junkie, that cowboy junkies thing is, is a real big one for me in terms of hearing the space. Sounding more intimate, I don't know, I just, I heard, the sound of the space, the live, like a live recording. And if you are a fan of like a hip hop, rap, stuff like that, and you have some tower speakers that can definitely handle that low end, you know, these, uh, these parasols definitely bump a lot more. They seem to just go deeper than the edge, definitely. Especially, they don't seem to strain at all. I, I felt like I had to turn up the edge a lot more than I, do, than I had to do with the parasound. So, I mean, as far as like control and bass, thump, power, just, slam and impact this parasound definitely has it whereas the edge seems like it's losing the edge to the parasound like it just runs out of steam a bit more yeah i mean well the parasounds you know you're talking about just a lot more raw power twice as mm -hmm. much a good a, yeah definitely a, an accurate portrayal of that so when it's like you know when people are just like man i can't hear the difference between amps um i think i thought it was pretty clear the slight differences that we heard Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think you heard different things than I did, but I thought that was pretty clear when we went. We level matched everything and we bounced back and forth. And there was definitely some, some very key differences between both of these amplifiers. All things being equal, everything else being, being yeah. the same, just swapping out the amplifiers. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty different. And well, I definitely heard a difference in, in, you know, right away switching over. So do you think these amplifiers are worth their asking price? How much are they? Uh, these are piece. Oh, basically nine thousand, nine ninety nine, whatever. So nine thousand each, and they also come in silver. We have the silver models. They also come in black. They're, I could go either way. They both look fantastic. They're Bill designed quality. to be rack mounted because they've got. They come with the rack mounting kits. It comes with the rack mounting kits. Um, they come. It comes with the trigger. It comes with instruction manuals. They're double boxed. They're built like tanks. Oh my God! Of course, these are mono blocks, so it's got the XLRs in and outs. It's got your uh, unbalance ins and outs. Triggers. It's got your triggers. It's got a gain gain switch here, low 23 dB or normal 29 dB. Turn on delay. It's got turn on threshold, little trigger settings, and then your beefy binding posts. And then what's this? This is the main power switch. Yep. Fuse, and then power inlet. And then the cool thing is when we got them out of the box, they got these handles. Yeah, these things are, like yeah, this right. thing is, it's heavy, but you don't have to worry about squishing your fingers because you've got two um, two nice rack handles and it actually comes with a rack mounting kit yes, it does. Uh, in the box. The handles definitely make them easier to, to, to maneuver. So just grab the handles, pick them up, drop them where you need to drop them. If you're gonna put them in a rack, definitely have two people because those handles aren't gonna come 
that yeah <laughs> that that uh and useful. i tell you you don't want those heat sinks landing on your feet because they will they will slice your feet up <laughs> yes they will so mm -hmm. build quality is exceptional yeah so i mean if you're looking for man just listen i think if you have some bright speakers yeah i think they're they're paired really well to a to to a brighter speaker yeah um but honestly you know if i had the money to spend these are the these are the amps that i would go with i mean they're sort of they're, they're not the highest high end but they're priced sort of in the middle yeah but they give you the performance of some really really much more expensive models and if you have tower speakers like i don't know if i would use these for bookshelf speakers yeah you might I think blow you might be them wasting, off. <laughs> yeah i think you might be wasting the performance in these yeah like, yeah small bookshelves right. because we i use them with the kenton number ones and they sound like fantastic of course i, I think it really maximizes the performance of those bookshelves but for the towers, man, they really sung with the towers. So yeah. I mean, if you've got some decent towers, some something that needs a lot of juice, this Parasun JC1 Plus definitely is going to do for you. Yeah, that could be a little overkill for a, you know, a smaller room or uh, just smaller speakers. So, anyways, guys, that's our thoughts on the Parasun JC1 Plus mono block amplifiers. Have you guys gotten a chance to listen to them? If so, leave a comment down below. Let us know what are your thoughts on the Parasound JC1 Pluses. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Bill, for joining. I'll see you guys down the road. We'll see you in the next video.